Christmas Day is a huge day in the basketball world because every year the league gives us five star-studded matchups between some of the best teams in the league throughout the entire day, and for many average fans of the sport, Christmas is the time when a lot of people start to really tune in. It's also a good checkpoint for teams to showcase what they're capable of and figure out where they need to improve when the stage is brightest. Which brings us to today's video. Today, I have five lessons to discuss that we learned from this year's Christmas games, one from each of the games, that I believe were both pretty notable in the matchup and have been a recurring theme worth monitoring moving forward. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first lesson learned from the Christmas NBA slate of games is that the Milwaukee Bucks still have a lot of trouble defending skilled guards. This has been a talking point that has been hammered home relentlessly since the offseason, so I know you've all heard it a million times already, but when the Bucks traded for Damian Lillard this offseason, they essentially swapped defensive help for offensive help. In that regard specifically, Lillard has been a massive boost to their previously mediocre offense, as they went from being the 15th round ranked offense in the league last season, to now being the fourth best offense in the league this season. On the flip side though, their defensive identity that they worked so hard to establish in the Giannis Antetokounmpo era has completely dissolved, as they are now just the 20th ranked defense in the league, and in particular, guards seem to torch them regularly because of how porous their perimeter defense is. From the opening tip to the final buzzer, Jalen Brunson dominated the game against the Bucks the entire time, finishing with 38 points, getting wherever he wanted to go on the floor. He was attacking off the dribble with ease, he was getting to the mid-range without much resistance where he thrives, and he was able to finish plenty of shots around the rim through the late contests of big men because his defender couldn't keep him in front of them. Even Emmanuel quickly subbed in off the bench for a lot of the non-Brunson minutes and chipped in with 20 points of his own in just 22 two minutes of playtime. The Bucks are obviously still one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference, but this has been an issue that has plagued them all year and is definitely worth noting. The next lesson from the Christmas slate we'll be discussing is that Brandon Pajimski of the Golden State Warriors is a hidden gem. Because of the fact that the Warriors season has been teetering on disaster for most of the year, there hasn't been that much positivity shined on this group, but despite the Warriors losing to Denver in the game, their 20-year-old rookie stood out as someone who could fit into every single NBA team and make an impact. He's flying pretty under the radar because he's just not someone who has been in the public eye very much, as a mid-first round draft pick picked out of a mid-major Santa Clara, and he wasn't necessarily expected to be making an immediate impact like this either. He was actually selected one pick after Jaime Jaquez of the Miami Heat, who has been sensational and been getting the rightful attention and credit for it, but Brandon is going to start turning some heads soon too. He's really just an incredibly solid, highly skilled competitor who works his butt off on both ends of the floor and contributes across the board. He's an efficient shooter who gets his looks within the flow of the offense, shooting 46% from the field and 41% from three, he crashes the glass pretty hard for a wing player, grabbing a ton of rebounds nightly, he's a smart passer whose assists have progressively been going up as the season has gone on, and his energy has been a breath of fresh air to the point where the Warriors have benched Andrew Wiggins in his favor, and the team has been much better for it. In his minutes, the Warriors are 13.4 points better per 100 possessions with him on the court than they are with him off the court, which which is a substantial swing for a rookie to be making, and if the Warriors want to turn their season around, they need him more involved. The next lesson learned from the Christmas slate is that the Lakers have an identity crisis on their hands. When the Lakers won the in-season tournament, things were looking good for the group that made the conference finals last season, but since then, things have started to go downhill. They've won just two of their last eight games since that point, they're now in ninth place in the Western Conference standings, and they're tinkering with their lineups to the point where they're trying to plug holes with pieces that don't fit. Coach Ham is trying to build their 
identity on the defensive end, and in doing so has benched D'Angelo Russell in order to trot out a starting five of LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Torian Prince, Cam Reddish, and Jared Vanderbilt. This is supposed to be a group that locks down on defense, but on the flip side, this is a lineup with absolutely horrific spacing around LeBron and AD, and it showed early on in the Christmas matchup with the Celtics, when they immediately went down 12-0, which then led to a 30-12 first quarter deficit that proved to be too big to overcome. Jared Vanderbilt has not made a three yet this season, Cam Reddish is shooting just 30% from deep, and while Torian Prince is shooting a solid 39% from the outside, he's not enough of a volume shooter for that to overcome the woes. D'Angelo Russell's defensive woes currently have him in the doghouse, and Austin Reeves' inability to take the next step towards becoming a star has really inhibited the Lakers from playing at the level they were hoping to be at this season, and their role players are way too one-dimensional in their lineup around their two-star players. The next lesson learned from the Christmas slate is that Joel Embiid plugs a lot of holes with this 76ers roster. The Philadelphia 76ers have far and away exceeded all expectations up to this point, thanks in very large part to Joel Embiid once again playing like the MVP of the league, having an even better season than he had last year. They're in third place in the Eastern Conference, they're ranked top three in the league on both offense and defense this season, and they have gotten some very impressive wins under their belt, with the most recent example being a comfortable win against the Minnesota Timberwolves, thanks to Joel Embiid dropping 51 points. Points. On Christmas, however, Embiid was nursing a sprained ankle, so the team had to play without him against an also hobbled Miami Heat squad missing Jimmy Butler, and it was a struggle. They managed to keep it close for a bit before Miami pulled away at the end, but Tyrese Maxey was terrible in the game, he simply could not get anything going at all, and he is definitely a player who benefits from Embiid's presence, being able to attack defenses as a second option. The Sixers are now 0-4 in games that Joel Embiid Beat has missed this year, and what it really shows is that Joel cannot afford to even have a mediocre game if the Sixers want to make any real noise. They're a team constantly in trade rumors, with some of the biggest names available on the trade market as the trade deadline approaches, and if they want to put themselves in that top tier of contenders, they're going to have to add at least one more piece to the puzzle. That could come by way of a two-way wing player like OG Ananobi or Alex Caruso, it could come by way of a bench scorer like Jordan Clarkson, or it could even come by way of a star like Zach Levine or Pascal Siakam, but one more piece is definitely needed in Philadelphia. And finally, the last lesson learned from the Christmas slate of games was that the Phoenix Suns' defensive issues outweigh their star power. The Suns entered the year with title or bust expectations, after making big moves in the offseason that landed them Bradley Beal. The move is already looking a bit questionable due to Beal's inability to stay healthy, and besides that, they have a lot of issues on the defensive end that makes the rest of the game difficult for them. The Suns this season are the 19th ranked defense, one spot above the Milwaukee Bucks. But unlike the Bucks, who have been fantastic on offense, the Suns rank only 16th offensively, despite having stars like Kevin Durant and Devin Booker leading the way, because the roster around them just is not going to cut it. Kevin Durant no longer provides the kind of defensive resistance that he provided in his Thunder and Warriors days, Devin Booker has always only ever been a mediocre defender at best, Eric Gordon's defensive issues have continually gotten worse as he's aged, Yusuf Nurkic isn't a very good rim protector, and they don't have enough guys in their rotation besides Josh Akogi that really competes that hard on that end. Luka Doncic did anything he wanted on the court on Christmas, and even before that, the Suns' losses have been piling up now, losing 9 of their last 12 games, bringing them to 11th place in the Western Conference standings with a losing record. They look nothing like a title contender right now, and I'm not even completely sure if a healthy Bradley Beal changes that. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what stood out to you the most from the Christmas games. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.